Hey guys, what's going on? I hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video. Today, I wanna to talk about what could potentially be the future of Minecraft automation. I have found a new and pretty interesting way of automating in-game tasks. It has the potential to be a very powerful and comprehensive system, allowing non-technical users to automate anything from gathering supplies to traveling to building and so much more. And while many of these things already exist with Baritone, this system allows you to easily chain things together. Imagine being able to set your account to travel to a location, clear an area, then gather some materials and build a base, all without any user input. Well, what I'm about to show you can already essentially do all of these things, and it's only a proof of concept. This new system is also fairly easy to learn and could easily be integrated with Discord or any other online social platform. Obviously, no system is perfect and we will talk about some of the limitations later in the video, but first, I wanna quickly give a huge shout out to the legends that are my YouTube members. These videos take a lot of time to make and honestly, wouldn't be possible without the legends that are on screen now. So thanks guys and let's get into the video. Before we talk more about this system and how it works or what it can be used for, I need to give you some context. Two weeks ago, a good friend of mine asked me to set up and host an automation tool known as N8N. I had heard of this software before, but never actually looked into what it could do. While setting it up for my friend, I learned more about what it was actually made for. And for anyone not familiar with N8N, it is a tool that lets you connect different apps and automate different tasks without coding. Imagine you have a Google form and you want to know when someone fills it out. N8N can store the submission in a database and instantly notify you on Discord, WhatsApp, or any social network. N8N is also marketed as an AI tool, letting you build custom AI agents with large language models like ChatGPT. And since it's free and open source, it's widely used in small businesses to connect platforms and automate workflows, all with a simple drag and drop visual editor. This immediately sparked my interest way back in 2019 or early 2020, when I first flirted with the idea of making my own client, I created a comprehensive list of ideas and features that I thought would be cool to see in a hack client. And on this list, one of the things I wrote down was a node-based editor for easy custom in-game automations without code. Now, nearly six years later, later, looking at the N8N dashboard, the first thing that came to mind was, can this be integrated into Minecraft or into a hack client in any way? So I started to do some research and I couldn't find any examples of anyone doing this online. A few Reddit users mentioned using N8N for automated Minecraft server backups, but I found zero examples of N8N being used alongside the game client in any way. I even ran a ChatGPT deep research and it came to the same conclusion. The fact that this has not been done before pretty much means one of two things. Either this is a terrible idea, not worth doing, or it could be a new and potentially great idea. But ultimately, there is only one way to find out. So I started thinking about different ways to connect N8N to my game client. I am not a Java developer, so I came to the conclusion that creating a Meteor client add-on would be the easiest, most straightforward way for me to achieve my goal. Starting out, I was trying to connect my game client to the online version of N8N that I was hosting on a server for my friend. But this had a lot of issues, mainly it required you to port forward or do other complicated networking to get it all working. This also potentially creates network security problems and is just more complicated than it needs to be. So I set up N8N locally in Docker. If you don't know what Docker is, don't worry, it's not important. You only need to know that N8N was now running on my own computer, so all connections between my media client add-on and N8N would remain local, which is A, safer and B, less complicated. The next problem I faced was one of communication. As I said earlier, this has never been done before, so there are no existing Minecraft nodes or anything like that. See, one of the great things about N8N is that it comes bundled with so many different nodes. Do you want to connect something to Discord? There is a node for that. Do you want to connect something to a phone call or SMS? There are nodes for that. Or maybe you want to connect something to your website or database. Yep, you guessed it, there's a node for that. But in my case, there are no nodes for what I wanted to achieve. So I spent a lot of time talking to ChatGBT, asking different questions, trying to formulate a plan for communication between my Meteor Client add-on and N8N. 
One of the suggestions included MQTT, a lightweight messaging protocol, supported by most languages including Java. Basically, MQTT is a lightweight messaging protocol that uses a simple publish and subscribe system, meaning one device can send out messages and many others can listen. It's reliable, fast and efficient, which make it perfect for my use case. So just to make sure that you are following along, NATN is a tool that connects apps and services so that they can work together automatically, while MQTT is a protocol that connects devices and systems so that they can share data in real time. Together they make a powerful combination with N8N handling the logic and automation while MQTT provides the fast reliable messaging layer. N8N also includes MQTT nodes so this completely solves my communication issue and makes my life a lot easier. I have named my custom media client add-on Autonate, and before I show you what it does, I want to quickly explain how it works. The setup might sound a little complicated, but here's a very simple overview of how it all works. I have created a Docker Compose file that runs both N8N and the MQTT listener locally, as I mentioned earlier. Inside of my add-on, I've built a set of bridge files. These bridges are responsible for relaying information either from the game into MQTT or from MQTT back into the game. For example, the baritone bridge listens for baritone commands. If I send a command from N8N, it travels through MQTT, gets picked up by my baritone bridge, and then is executed inside of the running game. And that's how my add-on and N8N communicate over the MQTT protocol. This seems to work really well, it's fast and is more than good enough to prove my concept, but again, I am no Java developer, so there may actually be a much better way to create this. Autonate is also currently very limited. I have only created a few bridge files for essential things like player health, health, hunger, saturation and coordinates, or for if a player enters the render distance along with a few other things. Currently Autonate includes three distinct modules, N810 connection lets you configure what data is accepted over the bridges and how often you want to send this data. The open N810 module simply opens the web interface for N810 that is running locally in Docker, and the time-lapse module was purely made for this video so that I can easily create hyperlapses of the automations in progress. I'm going to link Autonate below, but please keep in mind I do not intend to maintain, update or improve the project at all. Right now the project only includes 5 or 6 simple bridge files for basic automations. Basically just enough to prove my concept and nothing more. My goal with the rest of this video is to show you some of the simple automations in action and then to talk about some of the pros and cons of this setup and hopefully someone with more time and skill than I have can take this idea to the next level. Okay, that's more than enough rambling, let's actually talk about some of the potential use cases and show the add-on in action. Let's start with a simple illustration of multiple baritone commands chained together. So this simple N8N setup basically runs through these commands in sequence until the end goal is achieved. This is a super simple example where we go to one location, clear an area and build a schematic file, all automatically with no user input. The add-on uses the baritone API to know when a task is done and you could in theory make this scenario much more complicated. You could chain even more commands on top of these or if you wanted to, you could easily set up a Discord notification if for example baritone got stuck or ran into an issue. My goal here is not to create the most advanced or complicated scenarios, but rather to give you a better idea of what the add-on actually does. Let's imagine another scenario. You and your friends form a small group on 2B2T and you decide to build a large structure at spawn and you want to collect stats about the project, like how many of what block each player placed for example. Instead of manually logging place blocks for each account, you could set up a simple NADN scenario that automatically takes the data and plots it into a Google Sheet. You now have automated record keeping with no hassle, which to me sounds pretty cool. Or let's say your group has a large base. You could set up an automation where one account logs on every day at a set time and performs a list of go-to commands while downloading chunks to essentially automatically create a daily backup of your base, just in case it ever gets leaked or griefed. I think those get my point across, but I do want to give you one final example. Imagine using the included AI tools to create a feedback loop that essentially gives an AI agent like ChatGPT full control over a Minecraft account. I've actually spent a few hours making a workflow for this and my next video if everything goes to plan will be entirely about ChatGPT playing on 2B2T which I think is a pretty funny idea. 
Now that we know roughly how the add-on works and have seen a few examples of what it can be used for, I want to talk about some of the pros and cons of this system. So first of all, N8N is not made for Minecraft. This in itself isn't really an issue, but it means a lot of development would need to be done to make it all work. Again, my add-on is purely a proof of concept and not a full implementation. Next up is ease of use. N8N is a visual node-based editor, but it's not the easiest thing to use. You need to understand JSON formatting and even a bit of JavaScript or Python to actually make things work. This is not really ideal, the entire point of the system was to create something that is easy to use with zero code. So people like myself that suck at Java can still make cool custom features. Also, while the concept of connecting the Minecraft client to N8N is original, the entire project does not actually add anything new or crazy to Minecraft. It only lets you automate things or chain existing features together. Now, to counter some of these points, there are a lot of free courses on how to use N8N, and the learning curve for learning JSON formatting and Python is definitely a lot lower than learning how to mod Minecraft with a language like Java. Also, I would argue that the point of the setup is not to add something new and groundbreaking, but rather to make things more accessible. All of the examples I have shown are very trivial things and could actually be brought to life without the use of N8N. In fact, it would have been faster and easier to create these same features entirely in Java, but that's really not the point. People like myself who suck at Java currently have no good way to chain baritone commands together or to create an automation for automatic base backups for example. This system allows a player like me with limited knowledge to easily achieve these things, which to me is what makes this so exciting. Also, N8N not being made for Minecraft is actually maybe a good thing. It includes so many pre-made nodes for other online services or even AI tools. Before now, if you'd asked me to attach an AI agent to the game or to exfiltrate data to a Google Sheet, I would have had no idea where to even start. But with this setup, these maybe trivial tasks to an experienced dev are suddenly very achievable and in reach. Imagine a future where every aspect of a hack client is integrated to work with N8N. Imagine the powerful automations you could create if you could toggle modules on and off or change their settings. Imagine being able to see data like players in render distance or using the coordinates of safe holes for baritone pathfinding. Essentially, your hack client acts as a large sensor feeding all of this data into N8N, this data can then be used for more control over Baritone in new and exciting ways. Also, with N8N being open source, it is possible to create custom nodes. So imagine a future where devs not only integrate every module in their hack client, but also provide a set of custom and tailored nodes for these integrations. In theory, this could become a fully no-code system, though this would require an insane amount of work from client devs. One last thing that makes N8N stand out to me is the ease of downloading and sharing workflows. Imagine being able to browse an online marketplace of advanced Minecraft automations. You could easily download and use them yourself or even customize an existing workflow workflow for your needs, rather than building something from scratch. I really do think that this could be the next evolution of client macros. It's a feature that not everyone uses, but it's very powerful when used correctly. Alternate is essentially macros on steroids. But before you get too excited with all of these ideas, it's possible that no one will ever bring them to life. While these all sound like cool features, I'm not a Java dev and it's possible I'm missing something important that makes the system less impressive or less practical. It would also require an insane amount of work from Minecraft client devs, so it might not be worth creating for the few people that would actually use it. In conclusion, I may be the first person to have connected N8N to the game client, and like I said earlier, this is either a great or terrible idea, and to be honest, the more I use and think about the system, the more I like it. In theory, it would be possible for client devs to create their own in-client node-based editor for automations, but unlike N8N, this would not come pre-installed with hundreds of different nodes for different social platforms, so this system would actually be less feature-rich or require more work to create these features. By using N8N, N8N, the client devs can focus on Minecraft related stuff, while N8N continues to grow and expand its nodes for non-Minecraft related systems. Essentially, both systems grow and improve over time and the end user gets a more feature rich experience. This paired with full hack client integration along with the ability to easily create and share custom workflows really is an exciting future that I would love to see brought to reality. But as I always say, no system or client is perfect and this project is no exception. From a surface level, it may just 
just seem like a new way to control baritone and nothing more. And I mean, this isn't entirely wrong, especially with my proof of concept alternate. But I hope that some of the examples and thought experiments for future use cases illustrate how and why the system could be more than this and how it makes custom features more accessible to users who don't understand Java. As I said earlier in the video, alternate is linked below for anyone that wants to try it out, but I do not intend to update, maintain or provide any support for it. I think I'm okay at making videos, but definitely not at creating and maintaining mods. I hope that someone smarter than I with more time sees this video and sees the value in the proposed system. I really would love to see a more comprehensive leveled up version of Alternate one day, but I'm not sure if that will ever actually happen. And that brings me to my final goal with this video, user feedback. I really would love to know what you guys watching think about this project, so please leave a comment below with your thoughts. If enough people sound interested, a dev may actually invest some time into the idea and bring it to life, but please be honest. If if it sounds like a bad idea, I'd love to know why. So I'll see you all in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing if you haven't already. I spent more than two weeks working on this idea, mod and video, and the only way that this is feasible is with the support from the legends that are my YouTube members, so please consider joining them to help me make more content like this in the future. Thanks guys, and with that said, I think that's more than enough rambling for one day, so I have been your boy Kylab, peace in the Middle East. Thank you.